Hi, and welcome to this webinar where we will be talking about CTX SD WAN and how this solution can help you optimize the user experience for Office 365 and other SaaS applications. My name is Fredrik Wolgang. I'm working as an SD WAN specialist at Citrix. I'm covering the Nordic region. And with me today to help me with this uh, presentation, I have Peter Jorgensen. So, Peter, please introduce yourself. Yeah, hello, everybody. My name is uh, Peter Jorgensen. I am yeah, commercially responsible for uh, the Danish application delivery and security business, uh, among others, also our SD WAN uh, product. Thanks, Peter. So, if we look at the agenda, this is what we're going to be covering today. First, we will take a look at where the applications are uh, that we consume today. This is the driver for moving into the SD WAN solution. Uh, then, we will do a quick basic introduction on what Citrix SD1 is and what benefits we have compared to our competition. One of the important things that you want to achieve with SD1 is being able to do an intelligent traffic breakout. So we will take a look at what that means. <clears throat> Next thing we will look into our cooperation with Microsoft. We have a very tight cooperation with Microsoft and we will explain how that cooperation works with the SD1 product and Azure and Office 365. Then we will talk shortly about Citrix on Citrix and what benefits that have. We'll take a look at our uh, management and insight tool, which is called Orchestrator. And then I'll leave it over to Peter to talk about the customer case that we've done with a, with a customer from Greenland, which is really interesting. So that's the agenda. So let's get started. That we live in this hybrid multi cloud that everyone is talking about, it is, I mean, it's a familiar thing. And what that means is that we consume applications from different places than we used to. We, have, we still have the on-prem applications, the legacy stuff. Then we're moving more and more workers to, to the public clouds like Azure, Amazon, Google Cloud, and so on. And then we're also consuming more SaaS applications than ever before. And that is growing rapidly. And these, this movement to hybrid multi-cloud is a big uh, being why you want to consider moving into an SD WAN solution. Because if you look at the traditional way of doing WAN, it is like building a uh, backhaul traffic to the data center, and then you access all applications from the data center. Then you have to go through this big firewall. And what's clear is that this is not the optimal way of doing stuff. You need to find a way, new way to go to these applications. And what you want to do, of course, is to go the fastest and shortest way to reduce latency, which will mean an increased user experience. So that the applications are moving and that we live in another world is a big incentive for moving into the SD-WAN technology. Then if you look at what Citrix SD-WAN is, first there is a picture of how it usually looks. You have the branch office over here. You connect back to the data center with traditional MPLS link uh, and then you go into the firewall and then you go out to the applications from the data center. And I stated this is this used to be good. This has been done for 2025 last years, but now we live in a new world and we need to find a new way to build this stuff. So what you want to do is instead of having uh, just the MPLS, you want to build a virtualized WAN. So what that means is that you can use any different kind of leaks and build a virtual tunnel of your connection. So within this SD1 tunnel, you can use more or less any connection that is available. It can be MPLS, it can be internet, it can be 4G, it could be satellite and so on. And what you do is that to build a virtual tunnel around this, you encrypt the traffic with AES-128 or AES-256, so you build an IPsec tunnel. And then you bind all of these links together. You can actually use all the bandwidth that you have in in these links. So if you have 100 megabits, 100 megabits, 100 megabits, you can actually use 300 megabits. And this is this is of course the huge advantage for having SD WAN. Then we make sure that we steer the traffic to the best link that is available. The the user or the applications don't know where the traffic is going, but we make sure that the traffic goes on the links that is absolutely best at the moment. And how do we do this then? We constantly measure all the links for latency, loss, jitter, and congestion. Then we decide to send the packages on the link uh, that is best at the moment. And here we come into one of the benefits that I think we have with our solution. 
And it's come to us when there are two ways of doing it technology. It's out of packet based, which we are, and then there's the flow or session based, which a lot of our competitors are. And what this means is that we look at every packet that we send and send it on the best link available. And this gives us a lot of, lot of benefits. It, for example, gives us the thing called seamless failover. We can actually fail between an MPLS and internet to a 4G without getting any uh, interruption on the session. The user will never notice if we are swapping from MPLS to 4G. So we can, during a Teams call, we can actually cut the cable for the internet or MPLS and move it to 4G and the, and the call will continue as if nothing has happened. And that's a huge benefit. If you're flow session based, you need to have move the entire session. You can use one of the links for one application at a time. And then if the link is going down, you need to move the entire session. And then you will most likely get a session. The customer will notice that there is a change between the links and the applications will, uh, will not perform as good as you, you, you want them to. So, and with this technology as well being packet-based, you get other benefits. For example, when you do Teams, which is a VoIP real-time application, it's very sensitive what's called packet loss. So what we can do in that case, we can do what's called packet duplication. So we send the same package over two different links at the same time. And then we take that package that arrives first, and then we drop the other one. And this secures that we get a good delivery on VoIP applications. But then, for example, you can, if you want to transfer a file, which is not sensitive to packet loss, you want to use all the links that are available at the same time. So you can push as much traffic as possible to, to get the, the time that the file takes to download as short as possible. So instead of doing packet duplication, then we just send the packages over all available links at the same time, making sure that we get as fast as possible and we can half or, or even get one third of the downtime of a file, for example. So depending on which kind of traffic it is, what kind of application we're using, we can use the technology in different ways. And that kind of brings us into to the other thing that we think is very good with our solution. It's the thing that we can do around applications. We have a very granular application quality of service. And that's, I mean, Citrix has always been about delivering the applications in the best possible way. And that's why we invented the SD1 product. And that is clearly the evil. As you can see that in the product, what we can do with this. In this box, we can identify over 4,500 different applications. Depending on what application it is, we can make sure that it gets different kind of quality of service and we can do different things with it, like packet duplication and so on. And this is kind of different if you compare it to other vendors. They have more kind of a networking background. They built the product around pure basic network uh, functionality, but we built it to be able to build a more applicant, application centric WAN instead of having the traditional more shuffling uh, traffic. So that's, that's a huge benefit for our solution. So I want to say that the two things that we do really good and that makes our products uh, really good is that we're packet based and the things that we can do based on that and that we're application focused. Uh, and that this also shows in our cooperation with Microsoft, for example, what we can do with Office 365 and so on. But I will come to that uh, at a later stage. So that's the basic of Citrix SD1 and what we actually can do. Then being able to do an intelligent traffic breakout uh, and don't uh, have to backhaul the traffic back to the data center all the time is a big driver for moving into SD1. And as stated before, we can identify over 4,500 different applications here. And if it's not in the list, you can define it yourself. And then if you want to consume SaaS applications, or cloud service, you don't want to go this long way back to the data center, going through the central firewall, do all the security policies, go out to the services and go back again. That will add latency. And latency is usually what kills the user experience when it comes to these kind of applications. What you want to do instead is identify the traffic here, that it's a SaaS application, go to the closest resource of these services, whether it's Office 365 or it's the Salesforce or Workday or whatever, you want to be able to go the shortest way and then collect that service. And this is something that is really good uh, with the SD1 product. And then when doing this, there is one issue that you need to consider. Uh, it is that you go out on the internet and then you get dependent on the quality of the internet link. And 
but we can solve that as well. We have released a product or a service called Citrus Cloud Direct, and I will explain that in the United States what that will give you. But it's it's a really good way of securing uh, good connectivity, making sure that you can get quality of service when you access different kind of internet or SaaS based applications. So this is how it usually looks when you go out and, and uh, access direct internet services. You, you do the breakout locally here and you go out on one single internet link and then you access these services. What you get there is, is you don't get any quality of service, of course, because you don't have that on regular internet traffic. You, you get dependent on the performance of the internet link and that can definitely vary, of course. So what we've done with our Cities Cloud Direct service is that we're able to build SD1 functionality up against these SaaS and internet-based services. So what we do is that this is a cloud service hosted in, uh, in Citrix Cloud. And what we do is that we build an SD1 tunnel from the branch office up to Citrix Cloud. And then from Citrix Cloud, we make sure that we get the best ever possible connection up to these different services, SaaS services. Whether that is Office 365 or Citrix Cloud for that way, we can, we can make sure that this happens. So what you then get is that you get all the nice features of sd wan You can have multiple links here. You can have two internet, you can have 4G so that you get the failover. You get the uh, quality of service, making sure that you can decide which of these applications are the most important one and that should work the best. Uh, and then you get the visibility into it, which applications are used, what issues are there, and so on and so on. So by using this service, you're able to get the same quality on, on the internet and SaaS based applications uh, that you can get with the on-prem applications that you have. So this is a really interesting service uh, and it's working really fine with our customers. Then, as mentioned, we have a very tight integration and cooperation with Microsoft. Last summer, we signed a, a, the biggest agreement ever uh, and our sd wan product is included in that cooperation. So, then if you look into to the two parts that this is actually covering, first is the, the thing about connecting up to Azure, and then you have the Office 365 part. If we start with the Azure thing, the most common thing of connecting up to Azure is buying a so-called express route. And what is this is an MPLS up to Azure. And this is, it gets the same issues that you get with traditional MPLS. It's quite expensive, it's hard to scale. And since it's expensive, you will have a limited amount of offices that are actually connected with an express route. And what you can do instead is leveraging the sd wan technology. So you will implement Citrix sd wan at your remote office, and then you will install an, a virtual sd wan appliance up in, the Azure, uh, up in Azure. And what this gives you is the same thing that you get with the Cloud Direct. You're able to build an sd wan tunnel up to Azure. And here you can leverage whatever links you have available. So again, you can have multiple internet links. You can build it just on 4G. Now we have 5G coming as well. So then you can leverage whatever connections you have, making sure that you get the best connection up to Azure as possible. And then you can, you don't have to have the express routes anymore. You get this solution instead, you get much more bandwidth, you get better redundancy because you can, you get the seamless failover between different links. You get the quality of service, you get much more visibility to this. And on top of that, this is a much cheaper solution. It's much, much cheaper than buying express roads. We've done this with several customers already, and they're very satisfied with the result. And then one other interesting thing that this gives you is the ability to use the Azure Virtual One or Microsoft Global Network as a carrier. You can leverage the, the network that Microsoft has built up, which is incredibly, incredibly fast. They're looking to have a 20 millisecond latency on a global basis in this network. So what you can do is if, it, if this site is in New York and this site is in, in Copenhagen, you can take the traffic, go up to SD-WAN and, and go up to the closest front door of New York. And then you use Azure Virtual One to, to uh, send the traffic over to, to Europe. And then you drop down the traffic at the closest front door to Copenhagen. And with this, you, you don't have to have a dedicated line between New York and Copenhagen. You would leverage Azure as a carrier. So this is a really interesting way of building the, the, your future network, your future WAN. Uh, and then if you look at the, the second part of this is, is the Office 365. And as stated before, we can recognize here 
uh, all the applications, we can recognize that it's Office 365, and we can also recognize which of the Office 365 application it is. Uh, and if it's Excel, it's SharePoint, it's PowerPoint, and then we can do different quality service based on that. And then it's very, very easy to set up in an orchestrator. You just have two boxes here that you need to tick, optimize and allow, and then we will steer the traffic directly from the branch office up to the best resource available for Office 365. And what we've seen with customers is that this has a huge impact on the, on the user experience when using Office 365. We've set this up in Microsoft Technology Center, uh, and, and of course, Microsoft has allowed us to do this because they see how big impact this has on the performance of Office 365, and this really drives adoption for Microsoft. So we're not sending, we, we developed a, a service together with Microsoft, along with Microsoft that is called Beacon Service. So we're not actually going to the closest front door of Office 365, we're making sure that we go to the best, best one available. So we look at different, different things when deciding on which front door to go. It, it could be just the latency. It's also how much load is there on this front door. How is the different links uh, performing to the different front doors and so on. And then we decide which resource to go to. Uh, so this is, this is really nice. Uh, and then we've done this with a Swedish customer uh, and had great results. We have an official uh, case study on this. They, they managed to decrease 80% of the latency if you come on 10 milliseconds. Uh, so yeah, you can read more about it by clicking this link, but it's a, it has a big impact on the performance of these kind of applications. Then the next thing that I want to talk about is if you use Citrix virtual apps and desktop. Uh, here we own the HDX or the iCloud protocol. And that gives us some unique unique position compared to, to our, the other vendors when it comes to that. What other vendors can see when they want to prioritize our traffic is that they see this ICAT tunnel here. And then they can decide to prioritize it, of course. But what we can do is we can break this session into different streams. And then we can break these streams into virtual channels. And what this gives us is the ability to be able to prioritize and send important parts of the Citrix traffic on, on different links. So everything that has to do with graphics and mouse movement and so on, they are being sent on the best links that are available. And we can also do packet duplication and so on on these parts, making sure that the user experience is as good as possible. Then example, if there comes in a big print job, then we make sure we send this over perhaps and an not so good performing internet link. So it doesn't have any effect on the, the graphics and the audio and so on. And as stated, this is something that we only can do. We're not allowing any of the other vendors to look into how this, uh, into this protocol. So it's a unique solution for us at Citrix. Then we have built up a very, very good management and orchestration tool around this. Uh, it's called Citrix S2 and Orchestrator. It's a multi-tenant cloud-based solution. It is also available as an on-prem solution if you put specific reasons have high security reasons or if you're not allowed to, to use cloud services, then this can be used on-prem as well. Uh, we've spent, as stated, a lot of time on developing this. This is very user-friendly. It's very easy to use. Uh, it gives you very good, good insights on how the network actually is working, both the overlay SD-WAN, but also the underlay with the, the, the actual links. So you can measure that against the the SLAs that you've been getting from your uh, telcos and so on. So this is, yeah, as stated, this is really, really easy to use. Uh, and, and it's, uh, yeah, we get extremely good feedback from our customers on this uh, too. Then I want to leave it over to Peter to talk about this customer case that we have in Greenland. Thanks, Fred. Yeah, so, um... As, as uh, Fred mentioned, we, uh, we have this uh, customer case from Greenland. Uh, it is uh, anonymized uh, due to it being very new. Uh, it is an, an energy supply company uh, that is located on several locations. And they were quite challenged uh, that because of being connected to a USAF satellite. And uh, it, uh, it gave a very unstable connection which meant that 
the customers' uh, users had a very bad experience because of long response times and also uh, recurring downtime. So we engaged with the customer through uh, our partner, Atia, uh, where Ole Jakobsen is our spearheading our Estevan efforts. And uh, through the Estevan solution that we uh, gave them, uh, it gave them it gave the customer more channels on the U US AF satellite, and therefore also a more secure connection that enabled the transmission data to flow better. Um, besides a more stable uh, connection, it also gave it gave them more availability and more flexibility, and this shows. Uh, some of the benefits of doing a uh, real SD-WAN and, uh, and have given them a much better uh, user experience across, uh, across their seven, uh, 17 locations. Thanks, Peter. And as, as Peter states, this, this really shows the benefits of having SD-WAN because here we can move between different links with the seamless failover. They don't get any session we connect, we are able to steer, okay, when we have bad quality on the links, which applications are being prioritized? Can we lock down some of the traffic that is not so important and making sure that the important ones are working? So I mean, this, this really showcases that we can, that the SD-WAN product works in a really tough environment. Yeah. Of course, it works in, in less tough environments as well, but it's a, it's a good way of showcasing that, that how the technology works. So that was what we had uh, for today. Uh, and if you think this is interesting, if you want to have more information, don't hesitate to reach out either to me or to Peter. And uh, gladly share more information with you on this topic. So thanks for listening in today. And that was all for me. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks a lot.